Okay, fingers crossed that this works. Hello, uh, this is my talk through of what I've done with Okomo Okomo Emmanuel. Uh, sorry for the vacuum running, but you know, working at home and whatnot. Um, okay, so here's the deal. So I am in Ableton Live. Uh, so I'm just gonna share my screen and you see me in the corner, but like, I'm not obviously gonna be looking at you. Um, so I have generally set this up, uh, you know, with the track and all that markers. I'm gonna turn this loop off, okay. Oh, also, I need to turn on Do Not Disturb. Uh, could I cut this? Yeah. Will I cut this? Nah. Okay, so um, so you've got bass, you've got, this is the percussion tracks here, which I'm actually just going to group and label percussion for now. Uh, so I know that we weren't sold on the hi-hat, like kind of trip hop feel, but I did some cool things. Um, and then we've got the keys. Uh, this is my synth, my vocal, and my weird harmony take, and then all of the guitars is kind of grouped. And then I didn't know what this was, and then I figured out what it was, so Guitar 3, affected Guitar 3 is there. Um, so yeah, so here, I guess I'll just start. So on the bass, I compressed it, you can see down here, um, like fairly high ratio, quick attack, and a really long release just because I wanted a lot of sustain, and then I bumped it. Um, right at whatever this, what is this, two, 300 hertz, just so it could be really hearable. Um, so let's listen, I don't need to click. Okay, uh, so here's the bass. So you can see, I mean, the hertz, you know, you're sub 100, so if you have a good uh, sub, then you can really hear that. But you know, if you don't, then you want something to boost it up around there, so there's that. Um, and then I've got my keys, which are next. Uh, and you'll notice I have this at minus nine. Maybe it's easier for you to see here. Uh, minus nine. Um, so same thing, uh, ratio is at four. The attack is at 30 milliseconds with a slow release because I really want to hear the attack of the piano. Uh, and then I cut out everything below 100 because that's where I want all my percussion and things to sit. And then I also scooped a little bit right in that midsection. So right where I just added the bass, you know, scooping that in, making space for your EQ that way. And then um, I know this is technically in the vocal range, but uh, maybe I can put it in right here. That's some of the attack of the piano around 1K to 2K. Uh, so we get this. Oh. It's a really nice. Um, and then actually what I have is I have this send here, uh, which is what this minus 4.9 is. That uh, sends to this ballad reverb bus channel. Um, so it just has lots of reverb and whatever, and it's a pre-channel actually. So, uh, it will send four minus 4.9, 4.8 decimal decibels to the reverb channel, regardless of how loud or soft, um, the keys fader is, which actually is a little atypical and I don't usually mix this way, but I think it gives it like a nice kind of echoey thing. And also this just saves my computer from having to use a bunch of reverbs. I'm using a bunch of reverbs, but it reduces just by a little bit. Uh, so then we've got percussion. I don't have these labeled, but this one is the uh, kind of trip hop little beat here. So actually this, um, so I did something cool. So Ableton has this drum bus, which is like a compressor plus like a boomifier, basically. That's what the boom is. So I gave it a bunch, a bunch of low end. Uh, so here's the dry signal. It's at minus 13.6, so it's really quiet. So there's that, and then I add the boom. And then you can really feel that low 808 coming through. But I also took out a bunch of transients. Um, so that used to go right? Uh, I think I can put it back. Right there, right? And then if I drop it, uh -huh. that's just really significantly reduced. So it's crunched up, um, you know, it's compressed, it's got some like overdrive on it basically, and then you've got the boom. So it really hits. But then what I did was I stuck it in a cathedral and I actually made this more wet than dry. So it really sets it apart and gives it some distance. 
So now it just feels like the opening of Top Gun, uh, which I think is a cool sound. And then I use this uh, bit beat reduction, right? Redux, yeah. So it just like sample, like down samples it basically. So then, but I put that, uh, so here's what it is without the reverb. So, you know, it makes it feel more 16 bit, you know, as opposed to like eight bit or something. But then uh, because it's after the reverb that it affects the reverb as well. So you get this. So it's like this really dirty, gritty kind of reverb, which I think is cool. Um, and then uh, here for the percussion, the other percussion, again, I'm just kind of cutting uh, some of the low end because I don't know if I'm gonna add drums, but just some of the extra noise and then giving it a boost right here in the mid range, right with the basses, which maybe, you know, maybe I'll go back and fix that, but. And then here's the dry signal. It's not a lot of change, but it just helps clear things up, make sure my frequencies stay safe. I think we already talked about the keys. Yeah, we did. Um, so then I've got my little uh, MIDI thing, right? Which this whole shaper, you know, I can change the tone, the reverb, the space, but I wanted it to be really set back in the mix because I don't want it to be like a big deal, but I, I felt like the song needed some rhythmical in interest, especially in the beginning, um, you know, where there's basically nothing. So if you don't have this, You know, the only thing that exists there is the, the pickup in the piano. So, if you add this in. Really turn it down. Right. That just gives it a, something else, a little bit more interest. And then my, har my vocals come in. Which, okay, for the record, uh, basically, compre oh, that's not even the right compression that I use. Usually when I compress it, I'll set it around four, do that, and then I have this de -er because compression makes the S's really annoying, so it's just a nice plug-in, but you can, it's a sidechain compressor, or you can just not fiddle with it, because it's a demo that you'll be making. Uh, and then I have this real-time tuner, because I didn't want to fiddle with the actual tuning, but just kind of to experiment and get some weird choices. Um, so, you know, here's the standard melody. Come on, come in and you so you can hear my, uh, my audio or my vocal didn't hit the right note. So it just got smashed into, instead of, you know, like it does a weird thing. So, uh, but I don't mind it for right now. Uh, so then there's minus 12.5 cause I just duplicated this. Um, so yeah, so then here's the harmony, which is real weird. And again, I put it in a reverb chamber, you know, more wet than dry. So here's what that sounds like. Come on, come right, and then together, you know, offset just a little bit. Come on, come Here, actually, let me solo these two. Come on, come so just thinking about what's moving, what's not moving, and what can I make interesting. And it's some weird choices, but I think I like it. That morning, lonely exile here. So there's weird unisons, weird voice parts, but... Until the Son of God appears. And then I think this part is weird, but I'm gonna add the keys. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to the Right, so then the, the thing comes in. And then I uh, changed up the guitar. So here is the, um, you know, the original guitar track. So pretty dark and gritty, um, which actually, just for reference, yeah, there's not a lot going on here. So just all kind of in this mid-rangey area. So what I did was I actually flipped it uh, using some fake amps, well, simulated amps and a stomp box. So I've got a delay and a reverb, and then I have um, just like a, a drive amp basically. 
uh, where I'm really pushing the cabinets. Um, you can see their volume here and then the drive. So this is just a little bit of breaking point and the cabinets are really what's driving the distortion. And then for clarity's sake, I actually scooped out, you know, around 200 and then boosted the 1K. So you hear the grit of the electric guitar, um, but you don't get as much uh, thing. And actually I'm gonna move that up because you don't need quite as much low end because that's covered by everything else. So here's what that channel sounds like. So you get like the idea of grittiness without like a ton of extra grit. Right. And maybe, you know, maybe if you want that, you can actually kind of sum those together and then um, split these. So one goes a little to the right, one goes a little to the left. Maybe a lot to the left. All right. So there's that. And then I didn't know exactly what we wanted here on this screaming electric guitar. So basically what I did, here's the dry one. So I thought, you know, okay, that sounds like that. Sounds like you wanted some distance or whatever. So I actually added a bunch of distortion and stuff. So I uh, compressed the crap out of it. Um, and then same thing, kind of used a similar amp setup where I'm really using the amp to drive distortion. And then I put on this, which the effect is called an echo, but it's actually like a delay into a reverb channel with some modulation and stuff like that. I don't know. This is a diffused long cascades. But what I do know is it's a really nice delay plus reverb effect. Um, and it saves me from having to set a bunch of things. Uh, so it's more, again, more wet than dry. Um, and the reverb is on a feedback. So it gives it like this really long kind of unique tail. So there's that. So I think that's really cool. And then you also get the harmony with the lead here. So yeah, and then everything together. So yeah, so really lasts a while. And then what I wanted to show you was just kind of the space. So I have this, um, somewhere over here waves i have this thing that will show you your mixing space it's a meter it's not that one ah here you go analyzer so here are my here's my strings thing here so you can see it's just all over the place in terms of stereo field right and then same thing i bet with the guitars if we stick that here actually wait that may not be true but um let's see what we have in terms of stereo space here so more more left leaning because of that and i think i also panned one of these. Oh, I did not. I think I meant, well, no, cause it's, it's a lead line. So I want it to stay center, but this one is panned left. So you can, and then that has a lot of stereo scape. Uh, so then yeah, percussion should also, so I'm just kind of always thinking about, I mean like really all you need is compression, EQ and panning, right? So just thinking about like spaces, maybe some reverb for Z space. Um, okay. Let me just change my routing to percussion and percussion and this guy. Okay. 
So also pretty stereo, right? But then by comparison, the vocal should sit right here in the middle. Yep. And then because this is just the channel, we actually go to the Submaster channel where all of my effects and things are routed through. So there's a little texture to it. Um, so yeah, so I guess that's kind of where I'm at. The things that I have yet to do are thinking about some sections um, like right in this kind of opening space. Um, just because transitioning from this moment So I don't know if I need to take away the intro or what that, but that needs to change just a little bit because I feel like we actually lose energy right there at verse one. Um, and then coming into verse, or into the chorus. So yeah, so now that didn't quite hit like I wanted to. Um, but yeah, so that's generally where I'm at in terms of mixing this. Uh, like I said, I might add some real drums, but hopefully that is helpful or interesting to you. Uh, it's good practice for me just to figure out the system on how to do this. Sorry, I'll actually talk into my microphone here. Hello. Uh, so yeah, so I think mostly the song is just missing transitions and then maybe like one thing I might add like I don't know if it's drums or another guitar track. I mean, I like the percussion element, you know. So yeah, anyways, uh, this is not bad in terms of length, 17 minutes. Okay, so yeah, anyways, enjoy. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Okay, bye.